Hi, it's Steve here from the Studio One Soapbox. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the stock EQ plugin that comes free with Studio One called the Pro EQ. Uh, as you can see, I have it inserted here on a guitar track. Now, let's start off with the layout. Uh, I must admit, at first, whenever I started working with the Pro EQ, I did find the layout a little confusing. Uh, we start off here in the lower left corner with LC, which personas call low cut. Uh, to most of us, we would call this the high pass filter. Um, as you can see, holding the mouse will raise the frequency or lower the frequency. We can also um, control the depth of the cut or the steepness of the cut, 6 dB being the lowest. 48 D being the highest, which is quite an extreme cut, I think you'll agree. Uh, as for the layout, uh, usually EQs are quite linear. They're either vertically laid out or horizontally laid out. But with the Pro EQ, the thing to remember, it's a zigzag pattern, if that makes any sense. So we would go up next to the lower frequencies, drop back down to the lower mid frequencies, back up again to the mid frequency, then to the higher mid frequencies, then to the high frequency where we can have a shelf or we can do peaking as well, quite handy. And finally finishing off with the high cut or low pass filter to most of us. Again, we could just control it with the frequency. And finally, we finish off in the bottom right hand corner with the gain. Now, if I just default this quickly, say for instance that we had went to the higher mid frequencies and we had did a boost of about 8 dB. Now, obviously, this is going to raise the volume of your track. So to compensate for that, we use the gain. Uh, so we could maybe lower it. And how to work this out? Uh, if we go here beside the on off switch and we have our track playing back we can use the bypass button so we have our, our song playing we're listening to the volume of it we on bypass it we hear it coming through the EQ with our boost and we go oh that's too loud we can use the gain then to lower it or if it's too low uh, if you had done the reverse a cut then we would boost the volume or the gain. Uh, also you can use the auto feature which does its best to try and do this automatically for you and take the hard work out of it. Um, also um, if I just play a little back here we have a visual aspect to it. Here we have what's called the third octave. We can also have the FFT curve if you prefer to look at that. We can also have a waterfall. And finally, we can have it completely turned off. If you just prepare to work with your ears and not need any visual uh, aspect to, to help you in your cuts. We'll just stop that there. So, let's see. How would we go about using an EQ? What would be the basics of using it? Well, really what we would do is we would cut any frequencies that weren't nice to the ears or sounded harsh or muffled, muddy as it's described, and we would try and boost anything that sounded really nice. So for instance, default this again, let's have this guitar, we'll solo it back, we'll have it playing. And let's see if we can find something that doesn't sound very nice. So you can grab this, boost it. As you can hear, that's quite muddy. So maybe we might want to uh, cut that. And I don't like to cut anything or boost anything over 3 dB. If you have to do extreme boosts or cuts, it probably wasn't recorded good enough at the start and realistically if you can just re-record the thing because it will save you a lot of hassle 
Um, also here, when we're cutting, I like to raise the cue because I don't want to affect too many of the frequencies. Uh, just where the, the bad sound or the sound that's annoying to us is coming from. Um, again, let's see if we can find something that sounds nice. k just under that's not too bad again i like to only have about three and when i'm boosting i like to leave it that it affects a little bit more of the frequency range to make it sound a bit more natural you don't want the, that frequency jumping out and as you can hear the guitar sounds a little a little better it's a little better in the mix And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically the Pro EQ. Now, there's only one thing I would say against it, and that is there is no undo. So say, for instance, you've been working on it and you had unfortunately had to make loads of various cuts and boosts, uh, but you've done a cut and a boost and you're so busy listening to the mix, you forgot what it was you had done. Uh, and you need to go back to your original settings Unfortunately, there is no undo feature. Um, hopefully, Personas will sort this out. Um, we've all been asking for it for quite some time, and it is a handy feature. I mean, you really do need an undo feature. Uh, the same with faders. If you've made a volume move on your track, you could do with an undo feature. So, Personas, if you're listening, give us that undo feature, man. Sorry, I just went a little American there. I don't even know why. So, in conclusion, this is the Pro EQ. This is Studio One Soapbox, and I'll catch you again in the next video. Have a lovely time mixing and recording.